Good morning, everybody. Uh, so what's on the agenda for today is um, we're going to have a critique of your MobiRise websites. And I thought I'd go over some of them um, for some people who aren't even here, just as a point of comparison. It's not, they're welcome to, to speak on their behalf, but, um, you know, there's some, it's more pointing out some issues that I think need to be addressed with these websites. It can still be corrected pretty easily. And also point out with a few of them, you know, ones that really are, uh, uh, that have some unique um, properties to them. In addition to that, depending on how much time we have today, because I want to make sure that all of you get a chance to speak about your websites too, who are here, is that um, the next thing that we're going to start working on will be lesson 12, but then in addition to lesson 12 um, is where I introduce another program made by the same people who make MobiRise. And it's called wow, the WOW Slider. And it's on my website, um, you'll see a couple of them. It's very easy to use and it is free. And it isn't is, uh, um, the free version isn't is, uh, how can I say this? They don't leave as many marks. There's just a little logo in the lower right hand corner. So I've never bothered to purchase it, although I have purchased uh, Moby Rise. So this is the, the blank, you know, the starting uh, uh, window for WOW Slider. So if we don't get it today, we'll, we'll get to it um, on Tuesday. And we'll start with that. And then we'll work on lesson 12. And then as you guys are finishing up your um, or working on your Dreamweaver website and finishing that up, then I'm going to switch gears and, and um, you will not be responsible for the remainder, you know, after lesson 12 of the lessons that I'm going to cover. But there's one lesson in particular that takes um, Photoshop files and that are already prepared and brings them in directly to um, Dreamweaver and applies CSS styles to them. But it takes a lot of preparation in Photoshop. So, and they've already done that for us. So in the lessons, okay? So that's uh, what's on our agenda. So let me go ahead and start with this. Now, hold on here. I don't think the person's here who did this one, but, um, there's a few things. Um, <clears throat> it's not typical to have the navigation in the center, but I guess it works. I mean, it's it, it's okay. I have some other issues. Um, the most important ones that um, MobiRise leaves as placeholders, where it says MobiRise help themes and social media and things like that. These are here. I mean, you, if you want them, great. If you don't, delete them. Um, but they're here for you to edit and to change. Don't leave the placeholders because I mean, all of the links that they create, for example, to their social media, go to MobiRise. And these are here that if you want to leave them, leave them, but you need to go back in and change the links to theirs or to your own rather, okay? So uh, in, on the, in the content, I don't think the person is here. I said, I said that before um, who did this, but it's a little confusing, the content. Um, it's a beautiful background image, but this is supposed to be a website about, uh, regarding the story of a apocalyptic kind of world. But this is just a beautiful sunset. And I would, you know, if you're gonna use kind of an apocalyptic theme, then the image probably should appear to me be more kind of dark. Anyway, and then a little bit more um, story to explain what this is about. So that's what I had to say about that. So it's more the placeholders that um, we'll take a look at. So let's look at the next one here. 
All right, this is Cynthia. Is Cynthia here today? No, she's not. So um, again, you know, really beautiful. I'm a big fan on sunsets and clouds and things like that. I just think they're beautiful. Um, and that's not conceptual. It's just kind of on a very visceral level is what I respond to with my own work. So it works from that standpoint, but what she needs to do, and you can see that it's a might seem like a minor thing, but on the hover state, <clears throat> the color is the same as the background color for the nav bar. And that needs to change. Okay. So I believe that this is also a kind of a one page website. So if I click from home to work, um, it takes me down. Um, you would probably want to add the animation to it so that it's a slow transition rather than kind of a herky jerky one. And this is where she has used <clears throat> their kind of built in wow slider. And so one of the things that I would caution you um, about the wow slider to make it work properly as with their other um, slideshows is that you can see that each of these images are a different size. And so it shrinks and it expands and it shrinks and expands. And for me, from a design point of view, it just sort of, it kind of drives me nuts. So the preparation, and that's what we'll get to when we start working on the wow slider, is that it needs to be, um, that you need to prepare all of your images and, and decide in advance what size of slideshow you want. And there are a variety of sizes to choose from and you can create custom sizes, but I would make them all the same size, okay? All of your, all of your images. So if we go to the resume, that's gonna jump to another page and this works fine. Okay, type reads well against, you know, the backdrop so that you have nice white text contrasted with a deep kind of blue. Okay, so the rest of this is fine. And about me goes to another page. I think, you know, the nature of it is with most of you that the, um, uh, a little bit sh with many of you, not most, but many of you are kind of short on content and that over time, I think you can add, you know, and that will be fine. Okay, and this sort of has a nice nature theme to it. So each one of the, the heads, you know, the nat, you know, headers appear a little bit different, but it's all nature themed. And at least the, um, the nav bar is consistent throughout. So, you know, that is a kind of the unifying factor. And you do want to unify your website from page to page so that the end user can clearly, you know, tell from one page to another that they're on the same website. If it's too different or too herky jerky, it's, um, you'll have difficulty holding the um, attention of your uh, uh, your visitors. The artwork, which I, I like, I mean, there's a lot of really, really nice artwork pieces, you know, artwork that she has in here. Um, again, just make it consistent in size. Okay, so I don't think, again, yeah, she's not here. So who's the next one? This is um, Natalie. You're here. So how about Natalie, if I allow you to talk? You there? Natalie? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so do you wanna to talk to us a little bit about what your thinking was and how you approached it? Um, um, and I'll yeah, well, for this website, I wanted to try like a different background because my last one, I used like a gradient and I wanted to do the same, but I changed my mind. So I kind of 
chose the background, I kind of thought that it looked um, like kind of like techy, like technology, I guess. It has a very techy. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just wanted to have like a simple appearance overall. Um, well, yeah, and that's pretty much it. Simple, but it's a clean, consistent appearance. Yeah, clean one. Yeah, and that works. So, you know, you've done the single page approach. And when it slides to the next, that works really well. And this is what I was talking about, about the previous one, is that all of your images are consistent in size. So that as I slide from one to another, it doesn't have that accordion effect that expands and contracts. So that works really well. And you have, you know, a nice arrangement. Probably the only thing, you know, there's always more that you can do with a website. So that I'm always, that's what I'm always thinking about with my mm -hmm. own. And that, for example, with the slideshow, since you want to showcase yourself as a designer, is that there is, um, with the, the WOW slider that they built into um, Moby Rise, is that you may not have a title for each of the pieces, but maybe a description. Since, um, you know, go ahead and, and add that. Maybe not for now, but for your if you want to include a WOW slider in your um, Dreamweaver website to use mm -hmm. the same images, but then there will be an option for you for to add titles and in descriptions, and that you know that will be helpful to the end user, especially to prospective um, employers. So you can say that this was done for a beginning drawing class, and you know this is done for a color theory class, or this is, you know, done for a 2D design class. And, you know, if there's no title, that's okay. You know, okay. And this is so that they can, that they understand that this is, I mean, they probably know in advance that this is, you know, student work. Um, but, you know, these are the classes that it was done for and it gives them, them some sort of bearing, that's all. And when you're okay. doing your own personal work, the same thing. Um, sometimes pieces have titles, sometimes they don't. Um, even on my own website, I kind of pare it down. I probably should put sizes and that sort of thing, but you don't need to do that. But then, yeah, the rest, then, you know, it goes to your resume and that's clean, um, good size. And then you have your contact information. And this is also the thing that I was talking about that you've already done, where the copyright information was already specified to um, Moby, Moby Rise that you have customized it and made it your own. That's all there is to it. And then you have your email and your phone. I don't know if you've changed that. I forgot to check, but let's see. Oh, I like it. It is yours? Yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so, and again here, here's, you know, for email. And click. Yeah, but see, my thing doesn't drop. I don't use my personal email on here. So I could do it from here, though, the contact, which would work nicely. See, that's going to put in, it will drop in my own stuff, which is kind of cool. So it makes it easy for everybody. And that was the whole, well, when I de developed the class many years ago, the whole purpose was to, that there was, at that time, there was a transition from <clears throat> presenting, you know, for designers and illustrators and artists to present their work in person to online. And so this was a useful way to do that, that, you know, that you want to make it easy, the transition easy, not necessarily for yourself, but for prospective clients so that at a, a moment's notice, you could hand them a business card that would, you know, take them to your website. They could see samples of your work. They could be in contact with you very easily. Um, they could save the link to your website and you would be set to go. And that's really the state of the art right now. That's the direction that everything is headed. So other than, you know, continuing to add content, I don't have anything to add. You did fine, you did good. Okay, thank you. Make all necessary changes, especially to all the default things. Anything else you want to add? You went um, to pop, right? 
I grew up in Whittier and I went to Cal High. <laughs> so <laughs> that was a long time ago. So, yeah. We were um, right. No, I think I'm I'm gonna add more content on the next website since I've been working on new projects for my classes. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, and the next one, base, you know, base. And this is for not just for you, Natalie, but for everybody that, you know, when you begin working on your um, your website that's uh, based on our lessons, then, you know, use the template that we have already have and begin to use the pages, especially lesson nine for different ways of adding content. And then you just simply transition, you know, um, you know, swap out their content for yours and then go into the styles and customize it. And before you know it, um, it won't, it'll, the basic structure will resemble um, the lessons, but it, in the end, it really won't look much at all like the lessons. Um, okay, cool. Okay, very good, thank you. Who do we have next? So, let me go ahead, Natalie. This is, um, oh, okay. Um, he's here somewhere. He was, oh, Carlos is here, okay. So, Carlos, do you wanna talk to us about yours? Um. So um, I I actually um, made this sort of a, as an extension to the Wix website. Uh, it's pretty much just a, another um, just another website for my work, and pretty much a in the future, you know, for when I freelance, you know, sort of update this more and more. Um, and I did also link my Wix one as well. So in the future, they could also be updated with a blog or something along those lines. And, you know, as I mentioned, it's sort of an extension to Wix. Okay. You have a really, really nice logo here for the CS with Carlos Suarez. Thank um, you. I would emphasize that in some way. I mean, I, I Typically, as a designer, or the designer part of me likes the understated part that you have here. But because it is such an elegant design, I would make sure that you showcase that in some ways. Okay. That, you know, you make sure that it's visible maybe in, in a couple of other areas, maybe like on the contact page. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here, that maybe use a different footer for that so that you can, I mean, I, I like how you have, if you want to go to your Wix website, and that's what mm -hmm. I've done on my website, that, you know, when you have multiple websites from go to one to another, but, you know, where it, you know, there are places for images that maybe you want to use a larger image of your, your logo. Um, again, dark background on uh, the, uh, with, light text works well and here's your you know your portfolio that we can go for you know sketches Let's yeah see. so i actually added my process because i have um i do follow a lot of artists and designers on social media but and this is I also i'm sorry i interrupted go ahead no, i appreciate sorry. that no 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 i um, appreciate it. I always read their, the comments and their posts and social media and a lot of people always ask, you know, what they use, what's their process. Um, so I figured, you know, it would be handy uh, for people who visit the website to see, you know, what the process is, you know, what I use, stuff like that. Clients, some clients do it used to be the case that clients wanted to see your process. And I think that's still the case. <clears throat> um, not all of them do, but I think it's um, important that you did add that. That's really kind of nice. That works well. 
And also, this is what I was talking about for others, that you have a very lengthy description of each of these pieces, which is a prospective client, especially for someone right out of school um, or still in school would be really important for me. I wanna know what you're thinking when you're designing this. And that's a big, that's a huge help. So uh, kudos to you for doing that. Thank that's you. Really yeah. Yep. Yeah, that works well. So probably the only thing that I would change is maybe um, maybe the contact, make all of this a little bit smaller or choose a different contact page and then emphasize is kind of a, a finishing touch, the logo on you. Okay. No, yeah. All and right. oh, one other thing, make sure, let me go back here. There you go. This takes us back to your homepage. So we're good to go. That's all that you have some way. And there's also, remember that you have the little arrow that you can turn on that will take uh, you back up. That's also a possibility too. You know, just uh, make, it, make it easy for, for, the, for the user, for the, the people who are, who are, you know, looking at your website to, to, you know, to go up and down and to navigate, even on one page, you know, that it, it's not a struggle for them. All right. I got it. Okay, cool. Thank you. Okay. Who do we have? We have is Alexis here. Alexis, you wanna you wanna talk to us? Um, yeah, yeah, I'm here. Okay. Tell us about your website. I guess um while I was making this website. I kind of wanted like a like a I wanted to be like minimal because I think in my other website I kind of had all these backgrounds on it so I was so for this one I try to like calm down a little and I'm like I'm kind of just gonna go a little bit more minimal on this one and that's kind of my thinking like behind this one Not, okay. about mm -hmm. no I that's fine that's yeah. Uh, an approach that I appreciate. So, um, in fact, with your portfolio, though, for example, what you might want to do, since you have it broken down in a number of categories, is that you, if you want, you can um, add a drop down menu pretty easily with Mobi Rise. And then what you can do is with the drop down menu, then you can target these different. Um, portfolios separately. Mm -hmm. You're really, really nice. Mm, thank you. Um, and I, you know, so that you, that the, again, the end user can see that these are your photographs, you know, so this is, this is your photographic um, uh, portfolio. You know, this is your design portfolio. This is your illustration portfolio and illustration and design kind of or, or fine art portfolio sort of crossover, mm -hmm. you know? So rather than group all these together, these could be separate slideshows that you show. Mm -hmm. it, and that's something you can think about for your, um, your uh, um, Dreamweaver website. See, just as you have this slideshow here that I'm showing, mm -hmm. you could have that for each for each portfolio. Each portfolio has a separate slideshow. So that it, you know, it compartmentalizes it and, and uh, isolates, but at the same time kind of unifies. You can see that these are just different aspects of you. Your mm -hmm. color scheme works really nicely. It's um, unusual. It's right. and works nice, it works well. Um, you have the salmon color combined with the pink and uh, with the black and it works really, really well. Um, the little logo that you have for yourself is nice too. So again, that kind of follows with your minimal approach um, and it's understated and that works fine. So I think that's probably the only, my only suggestion for you is that you have some really nice work in your portfolios. 
um, and there are multiple portfolios. So go ahead and for each one, have a slideshow. And then under the portfolio, have a drop down menu and you know, have photography, um, illustration slash painting, you know, graphic design, uh, whatever. And then each one of those can target a different slideshow. Mm -hmm. That would be the only thing that I would do. Okay. Yeah. Does that sound reasonable? Or? Yeah, yeah, it does. Okay. And, you know, congratulations to all of you who are here who uh, were able to get this thing published. No one has said anything about that yet. I'll go ahead, um, Alexis, I'll go on to the next one. Dan, you there? Hold on. Let me make sure that you can talk. I'm here. Okay. So you already had a very extensive Wix website. So tell me your approach to this one and how it differed. And did you have any issues publishing it? I didn't ask that of anyone else, but. Um... Well, the only issues I had was uh, like, uh, like there should be a blue bar at the top there. Like, uh, I don't know if it needs to be refreshed or, or what, but like, Sometimes I would do stuff and then it wouldn't update. Oh, there it goes. It finally updated. So, yeah, I, you know, I, uh, my, uh, my background, I is uh, with photography and computer animation. It's kind of where I'm going. And um, I, I kind of just did a, you know, just kind of a basic, uh, uh, design and <clears throat> I've always liked this particular color <laughs> so you know I, I kind of uh, based uh, all my stuff around that okay did you I didn't check or did you change the the, um, the, the, the only color? thing I did yeah Was I didn't because you know. I don't I'm not a member of any social media anymore. I, I got off all that stuff. So <laughs> when I click on it, it doesn't do anything. But, you know, I ask, you know, ha, does it go to yours? No, no, it doesn't. I... Okay, well, that I would change. Okay. So, and where it says, you know, help center and Moby Rise forums and stuff, I would get rid of that. Okay. And that you can do. That, you know, those are just placeholders. If you wanted, if you wanted links to your Wix website and stuff, even though it might be a little redundant, you could do that. Yeah, I put a link to the Wix one in the <clears throat> in the contact section. Okay. Yeah. But again, if there's even if there's a little bit of redundancy, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the other thing that I like too that um, everyone else should should pay attention to is that you've used your own artwork for your splash page. And so, you know, it's clearly visible. It doesn't overpower your splash page. And by using the tint on top of it, that helps a lot. Yeah. So that yeah, it makes, it, you know, you, there's a, a use. I don't, it's just a design thing that you have this dualism that you can, that the Dan Breland arts is important and that's the most important and it reads, but you can't help but not see the image behind it, but it doesn't overpower or overshadow Dan Breland arts. So it, it's a, a subtle second read, the background image that wants me you know, to click on the gallery and to see more. So it's sort of a psychological thing. Does that make sense? Yeah, because yeah, I wanted it, to make it so where it wasn't so the image in the background wasn't so dominant, you know. Exactly. You want it. You, it's it's what social media is being criticized for right now. <laughs> it's manipulating the viewer is what it's doing. You know, it's teasing them, and 
in some ways, that's what you have to do to keep there's so much competition um, right now for eyeballs that that's you know what you need to do, and that's what you've done here. By you know, if I go back to the home page here, that you know, and see, okay, that's that's pretty interesting. I want to know more about the guy, so I want to click on the gallery. You know, it's if if you had everything up front, it's like, why do I want to look anymore? Why do I want to investigate the rest of the website? And it's just that kind of tease that works. So I think all in all, the only thing that I would do would be any anywhere that they have any placeholders, I would get rid of those. Okay. Or like with the social media, if you have social media, then go ahead and make sure that it's linked to your Okay. That's all. Again, very clean to the point, minimal, a good ancillary website to the Wix one that you designed. Do you have any thoughts about where you want to go with your, the final and last website with um, Dreamweaver, how you want to develop that? Um, no, not really. Um, probably, you know, uh, I probably just do more of a kind of like a background, more, more emphasis on, on like the process of how I create these images and things like that. So, so you know, that's a good idea. Okay. You know, maybe, uh, uh, I, I might even do like, uh, some technical stuff, like, you know, the tools I use, the software I use reviews of that, that kind of thing. That would be a good idea, because that would be helpful for clients to see, whoa. Um, that's for, okay, one thing we just discovered that we need to change. <laughs> you put your your image here for the, the logo, but you uh, need to go back into MobiRise and change the link so that it either goes here or your Wix website. Oh, okay. Because when I click on it, see how it's taken me to Moby Run? Right. Yeah. I didn't really, I didn't really yeah. think about that. <laughs> yeah, that's the, the thing is that they provide a lot of stuff for you, but it looks so seamless that you need to go back in and remember that, that you make all those changes so that when it, it, it's time and it's published, it, I mean, they, they already get enough advertising when it says that this is created with Moby Rise at the top, you know. Right. Okie doke. Anything else you want to add? No? No. No. It, it, it was interesting learning Moby Rise because, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, there's, it's not super intuitive, you know, and uh, it, it took me it took me a little bit to get used to it, you know, try to figure out how it works. Uh -huh. and, uh, I think I think the thing about it is that it auto saves whatever you do. So I'm I'm not used to that. You know, I'm used to like making changes and then going up to save. And without with without that option, it it threw me off. Believe it or not. Okay. okay. <laughs> Well, it's meant, you know, when web design began, it appeared it appeared that the direction was going to go more WYSIWYG. You know, what you see is what you get and drag and drop and things like that. So it was more intuitive and more user friendly, like for designers, not programmers. But it, it especially when things switch to CSS and so that when HTML5 and CSS3 came out and even beforehand, it was really going more towards the coder view. It was getting more and more complicated, not less and less. And so Mobirize, I think, was an alternative to that, that for people who know nothing about coding know nothing about HTML, but wanted a presence on the web and was somewhat user friendly, that this was an alternative for them. And I can tell you when we when we work on the, the wow slider for the slideshow, 
for me at any at any rate, um, prior to um, Wow Slider, you had to use, um, oh, what was it? It was, um, it's not used anymore. It was, um, it's gone. Now I'm drawing a blank. So that's how frequently I use it now, um, or can't use it anymore. But it was, um, oh, I'll think of it later. But again, it was made, you know, for, for interactive stuff, create slideshows, but it required a lot of programming and stuff. So that made it difficult. And this is, you know, much easier. Flash, that was it. And Flash is gone now. But at the, you know, at the, um, the beginning of, of, of web design, Flash came out pretty, you know, pretty quickly, you know, right after people started you know designing websites and there was a big thing for a while designing entire websites using flash but it required a lot of programming and um for whatever reason flash kind of fell by the wayside and when moby rice came out and especially wow slider for slideshows um for me that was a big plus because it was doing slideshows and flash was horrible so at least for me, I mean, I was doable, but it was a lot of work. So um, it's, it's just a, you know, an alternative, that's all. Yeah, I noticed the uh, Chrome uh, keeps popping up that it's not gonna support Flash anymore. Yeah, it's gone. And before, it's been gone for over 10 years, or about 10 years. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but it seems like it was gone just yesterday, but no, it's been gone for a while. So, and I think that was mostly because it wasn't friendly to um, um, smartphones and things like that. So mm -hmm. that was a big reason. But Steve Jobs is the one that sort of predicted that it would go away and thought, people thought he was having kind of a I can't remember who owned Flash at the time, whether it was Adobe or Macromedia or somebody, um, that he was just being Steve Jobs and being ornery, to be put, put it politely. But he did have a very a good point, and it did go away even after he passed away. And that's sort of the, um, the benchmark, is that when he left, when he left this world about 10 years ago, that it also went away, flash. So, and it had nothing to do with him, it was just that it was no longer useful. And that was also at the time, you know, that HTML5 was being worked on and CSS3, and that was an alternative to all of that. It was all gonna be done um, web design, not some alternative program coding. Okie doke. Well, thank you, Dan. We'll move on. Thank you. Now, I don't think Gen X is here, but I wanted to show her splash page. Um, Gen X is not able to um, join us, but I thought her splash page was, was unique and really lend itself nicely to a designer's web page, someone who uses Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and that sort of thing. So that really grabbed my attention. And you could tell here that when you look at the about page that her, the design of her self-portrait is unique and really elegant. Her resume is pretty straightforward. I think if I could, I would swap out the default icons here for something else, if that's possible. Her portfolio is clean and nice. And I would probably, the only thing that I would add to it is what I mentioned about some of the others. It's kind of short and to the point, but again, I would add titles or descriptions and or descriptions 
to give um, the viewer a little bit of, uh, um, oh, you are here, Janet. Sorry, let me go ahead and I'm gonna allow you to talk. Hello, you here? Gen X? Hi, hi, I'm here. Yeah, so I don't know if you heard what I said. Yeah, I did. Okay, I don't, are you in agreement or no? I think your your splash page is gorgeous. It it's, it shouts designer. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think I, it's unique. I've never seen anything like it. And it, um, you know, pastel colors work. The, um, um, yeah, it, it says that, you know that you're you know that you would work both on social media and for web design and print and everything. Thank you. And, and again, you know, a little bit that you've written about yourself, elegant self-portrait, again, says illustration design. The only thing that if, if it's possible um, in your resume page, instead of the little folders, if you could have something that's unique, a mm -hmm. unique design for each of those, that would be wonderful. It's not absolutely necessary, but since everything is and so, you know, beautifully detailed, I would do that. Mm -hmm. And then for your portfolio, it's a nice brief, you know, you know, half dozen images is fine. The only thing more I would do is add labels. Yeah. You don't have to have titles, but labels say, you know, this is for, you know, Photoshop. This is for InDesign. This is for, you know, whatever. Just a little information. Yeah. That's all. And you don't have to do that for here. But when you're when you put together a slideshow, maybe the slideshow that you'll be using for um, uh, uh, your Dreamweaver website, that um, you consider doing that you know, with a wow slider. Got it. Do you have anything that you want? Oh, in the last thing that um, this, the background color for the contact section departs from what you've done in the other areas. So I would use the same pink background that you've used for the others, especially for your home page. And then you go to about, no, notice how you've used the pastels. Mm -hmm. So I would use a pastel for the contact as well, instead of white just seems like a, uh, an abrupt departure. So those are the two things that I would change. Yeah, I'll, I'll do um, some of it. I'll change some of it, yeah. Do you have any comments though about Moby Rise or things in general? Um, I like it, but I think I like Wix more. You say again, I'm sorry. Um, I like it, but I think I like Wix more. You like Wix more? Okay, yeah, that seems to be the general consensus. Yeah, it has more yeah. options. Um, I, yeah, option. I think if you're willing to pay for Moby Rise, you will see the options that you desire. You know, if you buy the entire package, but when you do the freebie, then yes, Wix offers more as a free service, as an online web development tool, you know, live. It's also live, you know, you don't, you don't build it offline the way that you do with this. Mm -hmm. But I thought when I, you know, introduced um, Moby Rise, it, it was, I had two reasons for doing that. One is it will introduce you to working offline and forcing you to publish it using FTP. That's one, but then at the same time, um, to introduce a, a quick and dirty way of building a website using drag and drop, which you know is a little bit different than Wix. Yeah. So Wix, you do follow their templates, um, and it do, they give you a lot of options for customizing and changing. But you know, just slight variations so that you, you know it's an introduction to all these different ways of web design you know, from something that is very quick and easy and very intuitive to something that we're doing in Dreamweaver, which is far more complex. 
the big ring. Okie doke. Anything you want to add? Um, nothing. Thank you for the feedback, Professor. Okay. Um, we have anything else? I think that's it. Am I missing anybody? Yes, no. Well, we're, we really don't have time to get started with. Um, oh, I can talk about it for a few minutes. Uh, let me go ahead and move this up. And let me, um, actually, let me take you to my website and then show you how I have used this. So this is, in, in lesson 12, we're going to cover interactivity. So, you know, there are different ways of, of, and interactivity means simply the end user can interact with your website in some way. And we've already introduced that a little bit using the contact page and using forms to do that without maybe you being aware of that. But um, what we have here is that in, in a couple of instances, I have about three of them on my website. So if I hover over here and I go, for example, to artwork or new work, these slideshows were done in WOW Slider. And you can see that this, it's made by the same people that created Moby Rise. And it's a very quick and an easy way to create a slideshow. And there are lots of, again, templates that you have to choose from. And there are different ways that you can approach it. Um, the way that I have, have done it is that, um, that when you hover over the image, it pauses. When you move the mouse out, it will automatically play. It will hold for 33 seconds or so and transition to the next image. Another thing that it will do too is that you can click on a pause button. And again, these are optional. You don't have to have add these features. It can play automatically and just continue to play in a loop or it can play once or you know, the choice is up to you. So if you would rather have it so that the end user you know, allow them to play and to control how it's played, I can play it forward or I can move over here and I can play backward. And again, when I move off of the image, um, <clears throat> the little forward and backward buttons and play buttons disappear, which is kind of nice. And then the last thing, which I've been kind of harping on for all of with a number of you for your, um, your images, you know, for your portfolio images, is that if there is a title added in, in some way, add a description. So for example, if we go to the one that I have for my students, just to show people, you know, this is, <clears throat> um, let people know if they don't, that this was done in Art 186, and give the student credit, and it was done with Illustrator. And this was a mask assignment. So it really kind of it, it gives them kind of everything that they need to know, um, the end user, about this image. Probably the only other thing that could be added, um, but it's not important, I think, for um, this slideshow. But perhaps I know that in some instances, especially in fine art, because it's difficult to tell the size of. of of paintings or drawings or sculpture to include dimensions. So that's something to think about. And if it's digital, you know, then it can be any size, but you know, that might be an important aspect of the project to know for the end user. This is digital um, size variable, that sort of thing. So that might be important. Okay. Hold on here. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. So there we go. So now the size for these is optional. They have some default sizes that we can use. And as I mentioned, the, um, 
If you choose the buy wow slider, then it allows you to take this little logo away. And I think it's so subtle, unless they've made changes to that, then it's not worth buying. It doesn't bother me that they get credit for the wow slider there. <clears throat> anyway, if I go ahead and let me go ahead and open one. So I'm gonna hide this for a minute. And I'm going to go inside this portfolio here. And I'm going to do, let's do the one that I did for my wife titled Art Director. There were a number of slideshows that I did for her. So I'll go ahead and double click, make sure that that opens. Let me cancel this. I'm going to quit Wow Slider for a Second. Okay, let's go back again and hopefully I haven't stomped on hers. So let me go ahead and open it. There we go. So this is what it looks like when you begin to add and to change um, slideshows. And again, it's similar to MobiRise in the sense that they don't give you any instructions. It's all meant to be intuitive. So we have here, if you want to create a new project from here, you can. If you want to save a project or open an existing project, you can do that from here. Actually, this is the save. This is the open. And if you want to add slides, you can do that from here. And you can drag and drop, or you can add a plus from the plus here to add individual images, or you can add them from over here. And you can see this is the order of the slides. If you wanna change the order, you simply drag and drop up and down. And I'm not gonna do that for this. Now over here to the right, you'll see that there are a number of templates that are available to choose from. And you can click on any one and it will automatically change and you can see a preview immediately. You can also change the transition effects from here. And you can see that they have a boatload of them, a boatload of templates, a boatload of styles for transitions. Okay, We have more settings down at the bottom. You'll see that the slide size for this one was 640 by 480. That's a, a default size. But if you want, there are some other custom, uh, other default sizes, or you can use a custom size here. Okay. But again, it's important to note um, when you are creating your wow slider that <clears throat> you do a little bit of preparation work, <clears throat> actually a lot of preparation work <clears throat> that you decide in advance, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> what images you're going to use. And I would prepare them in Photoshop. And they can all be. Um, done in one file, they're just on different layers. And so to assure that they will all be uniform in size. And then um, as we did the first week of class, that on each layer that you add the proper extension and then you publish it you know, to the folder. And then that will be what you'll use to drag and drop in here. And then you can see at the bottom here, you can see that here's the title. Over here would be a description. And if you have a URL, so for example, what um, they will allow you to use in, in a WOW slider is that if you have links to a YouTube video, you can put that link here so that it will play. So that's um, another option. Um, if you have, we'll get to more details on another day. But we have other tools here that we allow us to customize all the options here. You know, do you want it to autoplay? Yes or no. Do you want that pause on mouse over? Yes or no. Do you want to stop the slideshow after one loop or just to let it continue to play? You want to randomize the order? There's a whole bunch of these things that you just click and that's it. Okay. Under the descriptions, for example, you know, do you want them to show 
you want them, you don't, if you don't want any inscriptions, say none. Um, other thing that is available too are button navigation. And I have allowed that. So <clears throat> if I go ahead and I click on here, you can see the little buttons at the top here that give you a preview. So if you want to jump ahead or behind in the slideshow, you can do that. And that will allow you to do that. Again, you can decide to have it or not. You can decide to have it at the top or the bottom. You can also decide to have, if instead, if you want a little preview of icons at the bottom. So that's another option. Okay. Um, then different options for publishing. So we can save to an HTML page to see what it looks like. You can also um, insert to an existing page. And sometimes that can be troublesome. So I'm going to show you um, next week a different way of doing that. And then we have different publish settings here. Um, the way I have it work is that we publish to a folder. Now, similar to with other the MobiRise, if you know the extent, you know, if you know all the pertinent information about the FTP server, you can put that in here. Or you can publish to an existing page. If you use Joomla um, or um, WordPress, they have settings for that. I have never used either one of these. If you want to share it on Facebook, you can do that as well. Or publish to Google Drive, you can do that as well. Now, you'll also notice, depending on how many slideshows you have, and I have three, at least three on my website, each slideshow is given a particular ID. Because um, included when you publish your, um, your slideshow, um, you're going to have a data folder, and you're going to have another folder that contains all the code that allows the thing to run that you also have to upload to the server. And each one of those slideshows has to be given a unique ID. And it's just a simple one, two, three, four, five. However, you know, many slideshows you have. And each one does have to be unique, otherwise it, it will get confusing. So one of the other ones um, to show you, let me go ahead and I think. That's what I want to do, I think. No, wrong Marine Miller. Maybe it's, I don't even know my website. Here we go. So this is my wife's website. Again, you'll notice the layout is identical to mine. You know, but if you click, she has a start button here that scrolls down. Okay, and she has another scroll window here, similar to mine. But each one of these is a separate. Um, she has multiple. She has a pretty extensive um, background in design, and so each one of these toggles to a separate um, slideshow. Or from up here, when you look at portfolios, you can see that she has five different portfolios, one for art director, one for fine art, one for freelance, one for interactive, and one for show design. So for example, if I wanted to go to show design, it would take me to that page. So each one of these slideshows has a unique ID attached to it. And similar to what I've done with the others, you know, I can pause and I can go forwards or I can go backwards. It has a brief title and description, or I can use the little toggle up here and I can jump forward or behind in each one of those. And then again, since each of these goes to a separate page, 
there's a little description um, here, just you know, giving the viewer more insight into what each of these portfolios says. And again, you know, let's go back home, right? What about? So again, it looks very similar to to my website, but you know, just by swapping out a variety of things, it also looks considerably different too. Um, you know, basic basic structure. You know, like most um, uh, skyscrapers look alike. Um, you know, the, the basic structure of the skyscraper is the same, but with a slight difference. Yeah, so that's kind of what we've done here. It still took a, a ton of work building this thing because she had so many slideshows. That is what took the bulk of it. So. There we have it for today. That's all. We'll we'll actually build one of these, and I'll show you how to insert it into your your website on another day. So let me finish. I'm taking roll, and we'll end today. And that will be. We'll call it a day. Um, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the recording right now. So um, I'm going to say goodbye to the people who are going to be watching this online. So I'll pause the recording, say goodbye, hope to see everybody's stuff soon. But um, 